Multiple imputation is a modern missing data technique. This technique and the maximum likelihood estimation for missing data are the two techniques that really should be applied in any missing data scenarios. In this video, I'll talk about the principle and the basic idea of multiple imputation and I'll go to some technical detail in another video. These technical details are important to understand if you apply multiple imputation, but just to get started, you need to understand the idea. Multiple imputation is a modern technique, but sometimes researchers or reviewers object to imputation on the grounds that imputation is basically uh, coming up with artificial data. And we should not use artificial data, but we should use real data and not make any guesses about data that we don't have. This kind of criticism is unfounded for a couple of reasons. First, the most importantly, the idea of missing data imputation is not to, to generate valid estimates of, of specific case values. Rather, this is a tool for calculating relationships between variables. So whether the individual estimates for individual case values is cor are correct or not is basically irrelevant as long as we get the correlations and other statistical associations right. The second thing is that this technique while it sounds like cheating, it has actually been proven to be consistent and produce better results than simply using whatever data that you have and deleting uh, listwise those cases that don't have the full data. When I took uh, my first course in structural ecosystem modeling that was told by Todd Little, he talked about multiple imputation. And he said that uh, he has encountered these opinions that multiple imputation or, or uh, doing missing data analysis is unethical because you are coming up with data that you don't have. And he said that he does not agree with that view. He thinks that it is unethical to not do so because it, when you do listwise deletion, which is basically the other option that you would often use, you are throwing away data that you have. And it's always better to use data even if incomplete than to throw away the missing data. So this is just to, um, to set the stage on and to understand that these are sometimes objected, but the objections against these techniques are really based on, on uh, misunderstandings and not understanding what multiple imputation is about. Let's now go on to the multiple imputation technique. So in my previous video about the simple and traditional missing data techniques, I showed that the best and among the simple techniques is the stochastic regression based imputation. Where in stochastic regression based imputation, we have the regression line that we fit on the data that we have, we calculate predictions of data that we don't have, and then we add random noise based on the fitted regression model. This had the problem that it does not take the uncertainty or estimation error in these predictions into account. So, so these are not actual uh, individual values that we would like to have, but they are instead of from a distribution. So we would like to model that the data are distributed around the predicted line, but for practical reasons we need to uh, estimate individual points. So how do we go and, and solve this problem? The multiple imputation basically solves this problem by, by doing the stochastic regression imputation many, many times. So if we, let's say, if we generate a hundred data sets with different imputations, then these, these points here would be roughly normally distributed and that would kind of re, uh, resemble the population from which we would draw the data. Then, uh, so this is the first stage. We do an imputation stage. We impute multiple different data sets. They are, every data set is different from one another. Then we analyze every data set separately using the analysis technique. And uh, this, uh, the analysis stage does not differ in any way of the analysis of full data. So we would apply regression analysis like we do normally, and we would just do it, apply the regression to 100 different data sets or, or how many we impute. After we have these, let's say 100 analysis results, then we have a summary stage where we have the final results, we, we call it the, the pooling stage. And if we do regression analysis, the final 
pooled regression coefficient would be a mean of these repeated analysis and uh, then the standard error would be calculated using this kind of formula. You don't need to understand the idea because this is something that your software will take care of you but it's uh, useful to know that this exists if you need to for some reason do the pooling phase yourself manually. For example if you apply uh, an imputation technique that your statistical software does not support. So this is a very simple idea. You impute multiple times, you analyze the imputed data sets, you take the mean of those estimates and that's your best guess of the final estimate and then you calculate the standard error based on, uh, on the variance of the estimates between and, and, and within estimation. So the within is the normal standard error, between is the uh, how much the variation is because of the uh, imputation process. And that gives you more precise standard errors than simply using one of these data sets and, and, and there are standard errors from that. A couple of points that we need to understand is there's lots of complexity in the actual imputation states. But there are a few principles that are, are general to all possible ways of imputing the data. One is how large should the number of imputations be? And uh, this required recommended number of imputation has been going up with the computer power because we can now easily run 20, 100, even a thousand imputations without much problems. So uh, most texts recommend between 20 and 100 imputations. More is always better, but uh, there seems to be a consensus that after about 20 imputed data sets, then the gains start to be very small. So the recommendations of how many imputations you should do are between 20 and 100. You can always try different values and see how it works. And if you can do 100 imputations in a minute, then there's really no reason to do less because the only reason you would do less is to save time. A couple of final points that you need to know generally about multiple imputations before we go into the specifics. And uh, this is a simulation based procedures and, and the purpose is not to recreate any data sets, not to recreate any uh, values for any particular case, but, but to model the data and model the missingness in a way that allows you to estimate the relationships between the variables consistently. M multiple imputation works if your imputation process, imputation model, I talk about that concept a bit more later in another video, if the imputation model takes into account all the features that you have in the data. So if you have cluster data and you want to use um, a data uh, analysis that is appropriate for clustered data, for example, multi-level model, then that clustering needs to be taken into account in the imputation process. So their imputation model would not be the simple stochastic regression model, but it would be something else. A small number of imputations, sometimes okay, 5 to 20, but if you have the computer resources which most people nowadays have, then go to 100 or more. The large uh, and final point about imputations is that uh, these imputed models or imputed results they are generally valid only within that imputation. What that means is that you get a, a likelihood ratio test for a stati likelihood statistic for example from the imputations. Those statistics should not be applied in a likelihood ratio test outside the pooling process. The reason is that any of these uh, statistics that quantify variation or quantify uncertainty do not really the individual statistics unless they are calculating use the pool procedure. They don't take the uh, uncertainty and imprecision because of the imputation process into account. So uh, you really have the results from the pooling uh, stage and then post estimation would be something that you generally wouldn't do. If you need to do model testing then you need to uh, build that model testing inside your pooling process. But that's, that might require some programming and might be difficult to do. So this is a useful technique and the idea is basically to do stochastic regression based imputation, run that many many times, aggregate the results, take a mean of the estimates as your estimate, take a standard error, 
are considering uncertainty in imputation and the estimated standard errors from the individual imputations and that's your final standard error. The imputation process itself can be a bit complicated and there's some technical issues because you need to ensure that the imputed data sets are independent and also you need to ensure that the imputed data sets capture all the relevant information that you have for your analysis. But if your imputation model is correct and if your analysis model is correct then multiple imputation produces you consistent and in large samples unbiased results under the missing at random assumption.